Hi, my name is Elaine Patterson, and I worked with my partners Cameron Sherrard and Kyle Richardson to explore the issue of detecting speech in birdsong. For birds, Georgia Tech is a haven of many green spaces within the bustling asphalt city of Atlanta. By monitoring the sounds that birds make, their calls, the rustling of their wings, their songs, we can monitor the health of the population to address how well we at Georgia Tech are hosting them. Given the impracticality of individual bird mites, the audio of a whole space is recorded. This recording thus contains much more than bird sounds. They contain heavy footfalls, cars honking, people talking, and much more. As a class, we tackled this issue. Each team focusing on modeling features for a specific type of sound. Our team focused on speech. These on-campus mics are located at four different places, by the Architecture Building, the Cherry Emerson Building, the Engineered Biosystems Building, and Bioservice Berry Tree. At each of these locations, audio segments of one minute are recorded intermittently throughout the testing period. Our general approach to processing these segmented audio signals is shown here. First, we manually classified subsections into speech and non-speech data. Feature extraction was conducted on both sets, then used cumulatively to train and test a support vector machine, an SVM. This SVM was saved as a .npy file and then used to extract speech segments from unknown audio input files. An example of this classification output is shown here. And as you can see, the start and end time of each segment is given in milliseconds alongside its speech classification. Audacity was used to take several minute input files and create classified segmentations. These segmentations were used to create the training data set described in the previous slide. In total, about 40 segments of known speech were identified for the training and evaluation of our model. The idea of feature extraction is that physical objects, images, or sound in our case, have key differences between a similar but different sounding or image. In the audio realm, some of the most important characteristics are the energy and the frequency, which is approximated by the zero crossing rate, as well as the entropy for example. For extracting these key features, we originally used MATLAB, building a characterization model with 13 key features. But after further testing, we chose to use the Python library, Pi Audio Analysis, to record these 11 key features listed here, which includes many key differentiators for speech processing. For this project, we trained two separate models to compare our extracted features. The support vector machine plots each data segment across the 34 dimensions of our extracted features. That includes the 11 shown here and 13 MFCCs and 13 chroma vectors. The SVM then groups the various data points into two clusters. One cluster exists for speech data and one for non-speech data points. And we used a linear kernel to separate these clusters. On the right, we've shown clustering between two-dimensional data, whereas it would be difficult to plot the 34 dimensions needed for our data sets. We used the sklearn.svm package and trained our model on 90% of our manually labeled data, allowing for testing on 10%. This creates an SVM model based solely on the labeled data from the EBB selected files. The other files did not contain many speech detections. We operated on both short-term features and mid-term features. The short-term features were pulled from 50 millisecond windows with no overlap, and the mid-term features were averages across 1.25 second windows, also with no overlap. Ideally, we would like to train our speech recognition SVM using a much larger data set. However, our model works for similar high signal to noise ratio audio files like the ones provided. We also evaluated a K nearest neighbors algorithm. For this model, you pass a parameter K for an odd number of neighbors to compare the unclassified input to. The two labels are weighted according to the proximity to the unclassified input's features and by the number of each label class within the K number of neighbors. This is a much simpler algorithm than the SVM model and produced slightly worse results for labeling speech. Between the two models, we ended up using the SVM more often. Both the SVM and KNN models output false positives and false negatives due to our limited training data set. However, the KNN output 
binary outputs whether or not it was speech or not speech, whereas the SVM output confidence levels, allowing us to choose a threshold to define what confidence level is necessary to classify speech. Once the models were created and trained, we needed to assess their ability to identify speech within our dataset. The KNN model was initially promising. When run on files with little to no speech, it showed very few false, false positives. However, on files with more speech, it misclassified several segments as non-speech even though speech was present. The SVM, on the other hand, with its variable threshold, allowed us to have more control over which parts of the data were classified in what way. After some experimentation, we decided on a threshold of 99% confidence when deciding that a segment was speech. The SVM model was then able to classify almost all of the segments containing speech successfully. However, it did misclassify some other noises, such as airplanes or construction sounds, as speech on occasion. Our final script for speech identifica identification reads in a, a folder containing the data to be processed. In our case, this was the audio files from different locations around campus. Once the file was read in, it was windowed into smaller segments for classification. Our windows were about 60,000 samples in size, or 1.25 seconds. Future research can experiment with other window sizes and overlapping windows to increase accuracy even further. The script would output a text file for each input file containing the times at which speech was present. All of those text files were then put into a directory called output. In the end, we came up with two scripts, one to create models and train them based on the data set given, and one to identify speech within the desired data set. This allows for researchers to identify speech without listening to hours of ambient noise. Our code could also be trained on a different data set to identify vehicles or other interference noises. This project is, part, is a small contribution to the ongoing research taking place at Georgia Tech to ensure that our vibrant bird population has a nourishing environment where they can thrive. Working on the speech classification part of this project resulted in more research than coding. Many fully fleshed out libraries exist already that perform feature extraction similar to the OpenSmile GUI and MATLAB and provide training models for the support vector machines. Understanding the inputs into the training model took the most research. If we were to attempt this project again, we would have likely chosen a different classification task based on the audio provided. I personally would like to adapt our SVM to classify and remove car noise, as the provided audio had many clearly defined sections of overpowering automobile noise.